Is it too early to say Merry Christmas? No. I don't think so either. <laughs> well, we haven't been in the nave for a couple of years. I don't remember being in here since I've held the realm. But um, anyway, it's good to see you. Cold this morning. Frost all over my yard, white. It was kind of pretty, but it was pretty cold. But we we welcome you and thank you for coming. And uh, I always think this is the best day in UWF, UMW, WSCS, whatever you want to call it. It is the best day. I always look forward to it. And I'm glad you're here today. Um, I have um, some announcements and a little bit of business to take care of. First of all, the UWF Sunday will be January 28th. It's the last Sunday in January, so you'll be hearing about that. Um, today, we are going to approve the budget for 2024. And I want to, I had uh, copies to pass out, and if you will share with someone, that would be great. If you want one, I have some extras. Carla might come up here and get one for you. Raise your hand if you want one. If you did not get a program, Carla will bring you a program too. I, I don't know how many of you, um, I hope that this went out to the UWF membership, but um, Sally Vonner, who is the CEO and Secretary General of UWF, that means she's up at the top in administration of this global organization. She was here in September, you may have remembered, uh, a lot of uh, information about that weekend when Holston Conference held its annual meeting here. Um, she sent out, Sally sent out an email stating that there were financial problems. That's a big surprise, isn't it? Everybody, every organization has financial problems right now. And I'll just briefly tell you what changes have been made. They have gone, the, the general office is in New York City. They have gone to mostly remote. A lot of positions have been deleted in the organization. And a lot of other things, changes that they made in order to finance United Women in Faith. And this budget will show, for those who have been members and have known what we've done in the past, this budget will show the same thing. We have decreased in the amount of pledges that we will be sending to uh, our district. Um, we have, and I apologize, I picked up the wrong copy of this budget and I had made a correction down here <laughs> where you see food service help marked out and miscellaneous abbreviated there, I apologize for that. But actually, that's a big part of what I wanna say is that we used to pay 
to have someone to come to our general meeting luncheons and help with um, setting up, cleaning up, making sure we needed what we needed to have to do the luncheon. And we had, had um, appropriated $300 for that amount. So the executive uh, board uh, approved a change in that uh, and we're going to take care of our tables ourselves. And I don't think that's anything uncommon for this church or for you all. And most potlucks, people are bussing their own tables and helping to set up and clean up. And so we decided that we could help our budget by taking care of that ourselves. And we did leave an amount, $250, which we named miscellaneous because there are always going to be uh, times when we need some money to pay for something that might not have been planned for or budgeted for. Um, so that was one thing that we decided about. Also, um, if you've been a UWF member, UMW, um, over the years, you know that it is part of our agreement to become a member of this organization by making a pledge every year. And that's just something we all know that we do. Um, but do you know in the last four years, we have lost 25 women. So that means that those good and faithful people are no longer with us. And frankly, it has affected our budget. And the only way that we can send money to Henderson Settlement, Legacy Fund, Redbird Mission, UMCOR, Wesley House, is through pledges. Unless we do a fundraiser or we receive a special gift, which we have done in the past. But it is really a part of our loyalty and a part of our um, willingness to be a UWF member and to continue to promote and assist missions all over the world that we pledge. So I just wanted to explain that a little bit to you today um, as we look at this budget for 2024 and approve the budget. Are there any questions? Betty? Uh, we, d we took UMCOR out because we are planning uh, to support that agency through a fundraiser this year. Christine? Where are the funds from the sharing shop coming from? Many donations that I... None of this has, has anything to do with the sharing shop that you're looking at right here. That's a separate account. Is that what you were saying, Carla? Yes. Okay. Anything else? Do I hear a motion to approve the budget for 2024? Second. 
since it's been approved by a committee, we don't have to vote. So uh, just bear that in mind, how important it is. Especially also, I, I should bring this up too. We've lost a lot of UWF units. Some through churches who have dis, dis, disaffiliate. Uh, some of those units are gone. So we're not just thinking about this as a local mission or national mission, but a world mission. We have a large impact on the world. So just bear that in mind. Okay, thank you, and uh, if you made a reservation for lunch today and you have not paid, Carla is right down here, our treasurer, and she will be in Parish Hall and you can take care of that. Also, in service circle today, uh, we have uh, handmade uh, beautiful items that um, they have for sale, and by the way, uh, they take that money and they use it for uh, missions and also to help to keep their supplies going, machines repaired, all of those kind of things. So they, will, they are set up down in Parish Hall. We have one cancellation for today, but it's already paid for, so if somebody would like to use that, um, okay, we've already got a taker back there. <laughs> that didn't take long. <laughs> uh, Elaine, back there. Okay. Any more questions about budget? It's already been approved, but <laughs> still. Again, thank you so much for coming. I'm looking forward to our um, singers today. That's going to be great. And we now will turn to page 206 in our hymnal, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. If you'll stand, please.
It is an honor to preside or to lead the installation of officers, so I'm going to call the officers' names that are listed on the back, and as I call your name, if you will come up to the front and bring your bulletin so you'll have the appropriate response. But we welcome Sue Piper as president, Ann Rigo as vice president, Judy Penry as secretary, Carla Bailey, treasurer, Donna Schroeder, archivist, Donna Bunch, communications, education and interpretation, Judy Grubb, Jean Gallion, membership, Carolyn Lamar, nominations, Susan Dominic as program resources, Elizabeth Parker and Catherine Hemphill serve together with social action, Pat Bellingrath is responsible for spiritual growth, and Sylvia Davis over the yearbook. These are our officers and the rest of you, you see in the program, you are community and can respond. And God said, see, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? From the chaos before creation came life as we know it. So from the chaos of brainstorming and details and more details come successful meetings and training programs. I don't know what you're laughing about, but, but it's good to have enthusiasm. Being, being an officer is grounded in one's commitment to the faith heritage of United Women in Faith, more than 100 years of mission making. I declare these officers duly installed. I charge them and this gathered community with being a supportive community for each other as you participate in the work of mission making. Let us join in prayer together. O oh God, giver of creative energy, receiver of mission making within us and all around us, Awaken that spark of divine energy and action. Let our hearts hear the song of transformed lives. Let our eyes see hope again in the walk and talk of free women and men, girls and boys. Let our bodies dance with the visions of love offered in the example of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Shorty here. Uh, hopefully you can now hear me. I've got a couple of certificates to give out for this past reading year, as well as the conference set of certificates from 2022. So get real excited. I know you all have been with pins and needles waiting for that for a year. So th thanks for everyone for participating in our, our, our resource programs, mostly in, in the form of our book reviews. I would really like to thank a few of our presenters from last year. That was Pat Rule, Donna Bunch, Verna McLean, Elaine Ralston, and myself. We really appreciate your, your help and guidance in this program. We will be participating again similarly next year, six programs. We're gonna change our date, FYI. We're gonna be meeting after the general meeting uh, luncheon. So about one o'clock on that uh, second Tuesday of the month will be our book review. So hopefully you'll be able to join us for the general meeting, lunch, and then the book review. And then Pat will be kicking us off in February for our first book. So thank you again for everyone participating. And I will, I will bring you your certificates at lunch, so don't worry about coming up. I will let me make mention for this past year, and I should also, with the caveat mention, I'm always nervous I didn't get somebody's certificate um, in the mail. For example, this morning I got mail for someone named William and someone named Tracy. So if I missed you, I greatly apologize, so please be sure to rectify that. But I do want to make mention and appreciate Nancy Staub, who participated this year at level one, Verna McLean, who participated in the reading program at level two, and Jana Davison, who participated reaching level three. I will, we have the 2022 certificates and I will pass those out at lunch and I will make mention on our new books from the 2024 program catalog will be in the library in the next week, 10 days, two weeks. So be looking for those. Thank you all so much for your participation this year and last.
This, this one's working now. Thank you, Tim Ward. Well, this is very appropriate because I am going to give this five-star pin to Tim Ward in recognition of the wonderful, come on up, Tim. I think we all appreciate the wonderful music program we have received from Tim's tenure here. Thank you so much for the gift of music. We're very honored to give this to you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Bradley, would you come forward, please? A lot of you do not know Kay, and I want to introduce her. Kay has donated to us large sums. Kay has donated to United Women in Faith money for missions. And you were asking questions of Betty about missions. We were unable to make our budget this year. We had to lower it, as Judy said. And Kay believes in mission. On the way down here, I asked her why she wanted to give us money when she's not even a member of an organization. And she said, I believe in mission. And she and her husband have been engaged in local mission in the city for years and years. And you will remember her because the Hungry Heifer Market, she and her husband practically ran that for years. So Kay, we're so glad to, to recognize you. This was a little bit tricky because you have to send in uh, this uh, form. Uh, that was another thing I had to teach Ann Rigo about. That's a joke. You can... I'm a lifelong, I am a lifelong woman. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you have to fill out a form and you give it to our local treasurer and she sends it to the district and that's how they order a pin and they send it back to the treasurer, and then Carla brought them here today so we could give them out to the people that we chose. Well, I wanted to give a pen to Carla. How was I gonna surprise her? <laughs> so, <laughs> yay! There you go, girl. She's been so great. She's been great. We have. and. And she didn't know much about any of this, did you? Still uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> but she's so calm. She's so calm, and she just takes care of everything and doesn't get in a snit about any of it and gets all those uh, reports sent in to the district, and we really are so glad that you're going to do this another year. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I want to give this um, recognition to my personal hero, who's probably been recognized a million times, but I don't care, Verna McLean. Uh, and there's so many things to love about Verna, but I finally picked out, finally narrowed it down to four things. Her readiness, my dad used to say about my mom, she couldn't stand to have a car back out of the driveway that she wasn't in. And, and Verna is kind of the same way, and I love that quality. She doesn't say, should I go, should I do? She's just right there with me. Um, her openness, and you know, Verna is always willing to learn. She'll, she's always looking for um, new opportunities to serve. She's always open to anything that comes her way. She's open to new initiatives and new missions. Um, She's always there. And uh, I love her willingness to do whatever it takes. It doesn't matter if, she, if, it needs, if it needs doing, she will do it. And uh, I've never heard her say no, and I've never heard her say I can't. And you know, 
as I get a little older, not much older, but a little older, it is harder for me to go, yeah, I want to jump up and go do this. I never see that in Verna. And the other thing I love the most is her toughness. If you're going to give Verna a hard time, you better pack a lunch. <laughs> because <laughs> she is gonna, she's going to win in the end. Uh, if, I hope you read her devotion this morning, which is called, What Gifts Can I Bring? And those gifts she listed were love, gratitude, joy, an open heart, kindness, peace, and hope. And that, to me, is my friend, Verna McLean. I love you, Verna. That's what we talk about. Mission, mission, mission. So how do we educate ourselves? How do we learn about these missions, local, uh, area, and international? One way we educate ourselves, ourselves is through reading books. And I want to honor Susan Dominic for her enthusiasm, for her preparation, for her Just her attitude that's contagious. If, if you haven't been going to any book reviews, you have really been missing out. And I'm delighted that we're having them after uh, our program this year because it, it will be to your benefit. And you will learn things you never had any idea about. And you'll be so glad. But Susan has just put herself into this. And we've all benefited from it. We thank you so much. Okay, you can always find this precious lady behind the scenes. A worker bee, always a worker bee, helping with communion setup, decorating the church, checking in attendees at events, just to name a few things. Recently when I had knee surgery, rather than bringing me food, this precious lady insisted that she stock and restage my shop for the new season. They say when in trouble, find the helpers. Brenda Pilgrim is a helper. When the pandemic hit with a vengeance, the executive board was in a tizzy because it didn't look like we'd be able to do our free-for-all bake sale. And everybody remember the bake sale where we'd line up in line up all the goodies in down in the CLC and everybody would literally, Macy's had nothing on the free-for-all <laughs> to get to certain people's cakes or pies or bread. And I knew that we could, that we could make this work. Susan Green was the vice president and she said, we're just gonna do it on Zoom. We'll just get it out on Zoom and we'll make this happen. And I got to thinking, hmm, we can do a bake sale and we'll do it online. And we'll have people drive up and leave their goodies, and then we'll have people drive up and pick up their goodies. And lo and behold, we made probably more than we made in many, many years. I think part of that is because everybody was so tired of being at home <laughs> that they were more than willing to do something to get out. And we did it in the breezeway so that we didn't have to come in the building and all wore our masks. I mean, we made it work. And it was wonderful. But when I started that idea, after I said, yeah, I will do it, I'll, I'll chair that, which I want to do. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. 
I thought, how am I going to do that? And I called someone at this church, and the answer was, sure, we can make it work. And we did. And, if, and we've made it work four more times because of her. Katie Strangus, would you come down? This pen is from Sue Piper and me, and it's just because two years ago we had no one that wanted to be president. We, yeah, yeah. It's happened a few times before, but we were really worried because there was no one that was interested, no one who was willing, and so we went to one person that we knew could do it because she's done everything in United Methodist Women, United Women of Faith, and and knew it frontwards and backwards, and we thought she can do it if she would. So we asked Judy Grubb, and she graciously and generously said yes. And we also said, please, 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 Judy, do it. Please, please do it. And she did, and she's done a wonderful, wonderful job. So we wanted to just honor her today, and Sue's got a few things to say. Um, I, I have been vice president a few times under a few of you sitting here, and I always said, I'll do it, but I'm never going to be president, never going to be president. And then, um, you know, I got this message from Judy. I cannot remember if it was a voicemail or a text. We text a lot. And um, there was just something about it. I thought, I think she's going to ask me to be present. It was not the Holy Spirit. It was, I don't know what it was. <laughs> but um, anyway, I thought, you know what? I have watched Judy, and I, I say this all the time, I think it's from being a school teacher for so many years. I bet there was not parent one who got to her in that time. Judy has a way of being decisive and sleeping at night and not worrying about it. We are more worriers. Um, but I thought, you know what? I'm just going to take Judy's approach. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to do this. Y'all are going to be great. I know you're going to say yes when we ask for stuff, so please do. And I just want to thank Judy for um, being my friend. And we've had so much, so many just good talks. Even when we just thought we were calling about something small, we end up having these profound discussions. And I appreciate you for what you believe in. And um, thank you for all you do for Church Street and all of us. So come get your pen. say one more thing. Ivy is not here today. Ivy Miles Slater, you all probably all know Ivy, but I was going to give her one. If you've worked with Ivy at all, you know, it's like a tornado coming into the building, but she makes everything more beautiful than when she, before she appeared, and we did a big um, dinner for the second year for the parents and children at Green Magnet Academy last week, and Ivy was her usual. I, she was there before I got there, and she transformed kind of a older looking cafeteria into such a pretty place. And she does that again and again and again. So I will get this to her, but I want to tell y'all too. Thanks. I wanted to share with you today our mission focus from the prayer calendar. It, it's a good um, reminder to us where our pledges go, where part of them go, and today is a very powerful reminder. Uh, some of our, our mission money goes to My Heart's Appeal for the Intellectually Disabled in Liberia. It helps establish a campus in Monrovia 
to address the needs of the intellectually disabled. So a good reminder of our money at work. And I wanted to share this devotion. From Romans 15, verse 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in faith so that you overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. As I bring you the last UWF devotion this year, I hope you won't mind if I take a little personal liberty. Sue Piper and I were fortunate enough to travel to New York in early December with Tim Ward and the church group. The second night we were there, we returned to our hotel room after a lot of walking, turned on the TV, and saw that a recording of the funeral service of Rosalind Carter was being aired. This was the service that was held at a United Methodist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. As we watched and listened to several who shared memories of Mrs. Carter, we heard over and over how incredibly kind and caring and compassionate she was about all of humanity and how her faith guided her every action. She was steadfast in her faith and firm in her commitment to Jesus Christ. She believed we are called to serve others and she did so her entire life. A loving and compassionate example for each of us, she knew her actions would be seen by many and she made certain that these actions showed a life of service to others as well as a life filled with kindness and the courage to take a stand against injustices. Rosalind Carter believed that there can be peace in our world and she was a strong advocate for women's rights and mental health. And I thought, this is how we view the world, United Women of Faith, in faith, with love and kindness and compassion. And we too yearn for injustice, injustices to be righted and peace to prevail. As United Women in Faith, we too can find inspiration for our work in the life of Rosalind Carter. In these times of war and selfishness and intolerance, let us remember this gentle but fierce woman from Plains, Georgia. Our calling is the same as hers, letting our faith be our guide in all that we do. Our job is to love others in a way that changes lives and heals their brokenness just as she did, and to be kind to those who cross our paths. Ours are the eyes through which Christ looks with compassion on the world. Just like Rosalind looked upon the world, always striving to serve others so that their lives and hers were blessed. She was always kind and always followed Christ. May we begin 2024 with a renewed sense of purpose, a zip in our step, our faith on view for all to see, and renewed sense of commitment to be the change in this world, every single one of us. And I'll close with my favorite Howard Thurman quote, and this will be our prayer. Let us pray. The work of Christmas, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. Amen.
you may be seated. <clears throat> well, what do you get when you ask a former choral director to be vice president of UWF? Well, at Christmas time, you definitely get music. And today you're in for a treat. Our very own Hannah Berkeley, who you, many of you have known since she was little, is here with her choir from South Doyle High School. They're in the middle of madrigal season, and I cannot tell you how, come on in, you beautiful children. I cannot tell you what this causes in their day when they are three days away from final exams, but yet they give up a class. <laughs> I don't know if that's such a bad deal or not. But anyway, they give up going to class to come and to sing for us. So you are definitely in for a treat and enjoy every minute of this beautiful music.
This has, has been a wonderful, wonderful afternoon installing officers and hearing about all the missions and feeling renewed in mission giving and being inspired by the, the, the singing. And so now as we prepare to go fellowship together and nourish our bodies but also our spirits, uh, after the benediction we will go down to the parish hall. But first, uh, we, have to, we, we want to take a picture. So after the benediction, I would ask that while Edie is playing her beautiful voluntary, you come quietly without talking. I guess Judy Grubb needs to do this part without talking. If you will come to the steps and Judy Grubb is her last act, we'll tell you where to stand. <laughs> but we, we will do it reverently while we listen to music and just be so impressed with how quickly we do this so that Katie can get a, a good picture of, of all of you before we head off to lunch. Uh, it, is, it is wonderful to Let's see all of you here, and Edie, we thank you for the music that you've provided today. So let us uh, stand for our benediction. It is Christ for the world we sing. It is Christ for the world that we go out and do. It is Christ for the world, everything that we think and speak and pray. And so now as we prepare to go out into the world for Christ, may you know that you are blessed by God's love, you are assured of God's grace, and you are connected and embraced by God's Spirit. Amen. <laughs>